All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody doing good? Amen. Everybody ready? Ready. All right. Let's go to Hebrews 11th chapter. I'm going to read the first six verses. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith... Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of the gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. Before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that it is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How do you please God? Faith. Faith. Faith pleases God. Now we went through the scriptures and I taught a while back how we got to, we got to God kind of faith. We have God's faith. So how do, you, how, do, how do you use faith? How is faith used for you? Through speaking. You release your faith by speaking. Okay? Now it says, faith please God. Look at 11.4. I'm just going to read the first few words. It says, by faith. By faith, Abel offered, offered up. Isaac unto God. How did he do it? By faith. That was his works. Over in James, the uh, second chapter, if you want to look there. If not, I'll just read it. Verse 17 through 22. It says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Well, see, what he's saying, you have to put some action in your faith. Faith is an action word. You've you got to speak it out your mouth, but you've got to put some kind of action in it. Like Abraham, he carried Isaac up to do. That was his, that was his action. That was his works in his faith. 18th verse says, Yea, a man saith, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. In other words, what God lays on your heart. And I always, I always wait until I, I, re, I, I really, uh, in my spirit, realize that God is moving on me to do something. I believe by faith. I'll see it with my eye. I'll see it in the spirit realm. I'll get visions of it. And I'm, but I'm constantly listening, waiting to see if God's going to tell me to do something. That's your works when God tells you to do it. Works ain't you just getting out there doing something on your own. 19th verse says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So just believe it ain't going to get it done. Uh, you can use, a, I've heard people say, well, if you'll believe, it'll happen. Well, not necessarily. Uh, let me ask you this. You think about it like this. If, we, if you had a room full of food, a table, and it had food on it, and it was food you really liked. I mean, it was food you really liked to eat. Right. And you used to tell me, Emmett, when I eat this food, I'm going to live. It'll be good for me. I said, okay. So I come back by the next week, and you say, Emmett, this food is good. And I eat this food, I'm living. I said, okay. So I come back by the next week, and you tell me the same thing. Well, I come by the next week, you did. 
Why'd you die? You was believing it. Because you didn't need it. See, that's the works part of it. So it's you got to do more than just believe. And as I see a lot of people, they, they try to get their healing because they believe. Well, it's more to it than believing. It's, Dot is an example of that. She, got, she finally got to believe in it. You need to believe. Now she finally got to believe in it, but she started putting some action in it. When she started getting on that exercise machine, she started putting some works in her faith, some action in it. And she started getting better and better. And I don't know why sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes people get healed quick. Sometimes it takes longer. I don't know all the answers. But I know if you're going to release your faith, you've got to release it by speaking. You've got to put some action in it. And then uh, the 21st verse says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered up Isaac his son upon the altar? Remember how he done that? He, he went to the trouble to carry his son all the way up on that mountain to put him on the altar. This, uh, I, I've, I've got, I've got, I saw that in different ways about that. Uh, one way I saw that was so when he carried Isaac up there and put him on that altar, it was to let the devil know that Abraham would do whatever God said to do. He was not going to do what anything the devil tried to get him to do. And that was he was, and he was also working in his faith. So there's some different ways you can look at that. Some different revelations you can get off of that, because I've got some different things off of it. See thou now how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. So how do you make your faith perfect? You have to put some kind of works in it. And I'm not talking about getting out there working. Uh, well, you're, Working with your natural works, just working. Works is, is it, your, your works has got to be coming from God. Listen to your spirit. Whatever your spirit says, that's going to be your works. See, on this building I've been, I've been looking at, I've been seeing it. I've been getting visions of it. I've been believing for it. I've been doing everything I'm supposed to do. And I knew I needed to plant a seed. See, works can be planting a seed. But I didn't know where to plant it. I wasn't picking up nothing. And I don't know why, but I finally I picked up something. And then again yesterday, I picked up something else about planting a seed. So what you do then, you just do what's in your spirit. That's your works on your faith. So what that's doing is telling me things is getting close. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. What do we do? We read by faith, verse 4. Look at verse 5. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated. How? By faith. By faith, what did that do? It pleased God. Look at verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. What do you think that done with God when Noah started building that ark and had never seen rain? You reckon that pleased God? He put some action in his faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, he could have sit there and believed from now on that God was going to keep him safe and wound up drowning. Mm -hmm. Especially when he's getting all that opposition from the people. Yeah. So you you got you have to listen to your spirit and put some action in your faith. Then look at uh, verse nine. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. So he stayed there. He stayed in the land, worked on that ark for what was it, like 120 years, something like that, before he got it built. Now, boy, that's putting some action in your faith that God laid on your heart. I don't think there's never been nobody put that much action in their faith as Noah did. What did that do? Pleased God. Look at verse uh, 19. No, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tired, offered up Isaac. Remember, we've done, done that one a couple of times, talked about that. Verse 20. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped. 
learning upon the top of his, leaning upon the top of his staff. He blessed them both. What did that do? Pleased God. By faith, it pleased God. Verse 21. By faith, I mean, uh, verse 22. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandments concerning his bones. By faith, that, what did that do? Pleased God. Verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Did you notice, notice one thing in that verse? It said by faith, but he said he was not afraid. No fear in it. What you think that done? Pleased God. 11.23. Now verse 11.24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, what do you reckon that done with God? It pleased God to know that Moses would stand that strong in faith. Listen, all these old, all these people back here, this, this, these people in the Old Testament talk about, they was doing things that pleased God. We need to learn to do the same thing. Verse 27. By faith, he forsook Egypt and feared the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Then verse 29, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians attempting to do were drowned. Reckon that pleased God? By faith, boy, that pleased God. Can you, you know, if, if you stop and get a vision and look at that, God separated them waters. They had to be way up there. There ain't no telling how high. And they walked over on dry ground. By faith, they walked through that. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't something that it was really easy to do. But you, you just, just imagine millions of people went through there. How, about, how much do you think that pleased God? These Old Testament saints are pleasing God. Yeah, they are. See, we need to start learning to do the same thing. We need to learn to please God. I think it's a big thing right now. Verse uh, 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Now just think about that. God told Joshua to march around Jericho seven times. Yeah. And by faith, they done it. And the walls fell down. Now, when you know, I've heard, I've heard them preaching and talk, talking about it, and they took it and they took it. But they make you think they had they had to climb over all that stuff after it broke up and fell. No, the walls of Jericho went down in the ground. And they walked over like it was a sidewalk. <laughs> By faith, they did it. Boy, that pleased God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Verse 31, by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. That pleased God. Now you just think about this. She was supposed to die with the rest of them but she helped them spies and they told her put a red ribbon and then she'd be spared and she was. What she did, she'd done that by faith. Now she had everybody there that would have killed her if they'd have knew she was doing that by faith. That pleased God. It pleases God when we do things by faith. All right. Now we're going to please God on something. Go to Psalms 91. I know we've been doing this a lot, but we're still going to do it. Psalms 91. Verse 1 says, He that lives in Jesus and Jesus in him is living in the Most High and will abide under the defense of the Almighty. 
I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Say it and please God. How are you going to please God with that? I say, you got to say it. You want to release your faith? Say it. And when you release your faith, what's that doing? Pleasing God. I've had people come up to me in, in prayer lines and different things and say, I just wish I could pray, please God. <laughs> well, it's not hard to do. Just say what the word says about you. Just believe it and say it. Yeah. Amen. That's, you start off believing it right there. But what happens is most of the people who do that in a prayer line and all, they don't know what the word says. That's why they're doing that. They have no idea. Going to church and has no idea what the word says. Then the third verse says, Surely he shall deliver you, which means no risk and no failure, that word surely. No risk and no failure. He shall deliver you from the lure, the snare of the devil or, or darkness, and from the noise of pestilence, which means viruses, infections, diseases, whatever. No risk, no failure. You have to say it and believe it. Say it, believe it, and then act like it. What, you know, just, just think about what me and Joe's talked about. Just think about what we've done through this virus. Me and him pretty well probably been doing about the same thing. We just believe it and we act like it. We don't get scared. We don't get scared of getting around people. We don't get scared of hugging people. No virus. And you got a whole world full of people out there that's scared they're going to catch it. And you know what they're doing? Catching it. Which one's pleasing God? <laughs> Saying it and doing it. Uh, long, long time ago, I did, it's in scripture, I want to go back and find out. But we talk about, you know, people who please God and when they ask for things. The biggest problem we have is that are we, we're not sure if God exists. You have to, first thing before you even come to prayer or anything, you have to believe God exists. Yeah. And see, when you're talking about the faith, if you don't believe God exists, I don't care what you You can't do use nothing. You have yeah. to really, and if you've got people, you ask them about it, you know, do you believe God exists? They go, well, and they wait for something, they want something mm -hmm. physical. Back here, physical things happen to them because God introduced himself. Now he gave us the word of God so we can rely on any time at all. we got miracles here, everything else, and this is an example. But still yet today, people, you know, many people told me, well, show me Jesus. Let him come down and do this. Let it, and it, there's no way I can talk to him because they don't believe that God exists. And even if we go to pray, you can pray all you want. It's just the idea, if you don't believe God is hearing it, it, it it's futile. Yep. And just, so what you're talking about is exactly right. You've got to put your faith into it works. Well, most of the church, most people that go to church and all, they believe in God. They believe there is a God exists. It's the people out there in the world, a lot of them, that don't believe he exists mm -hmm. or don't know. They want a sign. They want something to show them. Right. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, we've got that two type of people. Really, that's what I call them. And you got two people. types. They either believe there is a God or they don't. You got people that believe it, but they act like they don't. Yep, you got that too, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was talking about. And then, yeah. and then that fifth verse says, Thou shalt not be afraid. You can't fear through none of this. Do you know all them Old Testament saints we just read? By faith, do you know none of them got in fear? There was no fear in them. Now listen, fear is not, not something that uh, you have to think about or be afraid of that you can't get rid of. It's easy to get rid of. Just say, go. In the name of Jesus, get out of my life. And if it keeps coming back, every time it comes back, tell it, get out of my life. And I guarantee you, if you stay with that and you keep saying that by faith, it won't be long. You'll be set free of fear. 
It has to obey you as the Spirit. Mm-hmm. What did Luke 10, 19 and 20 says all spirits are subject to you. They have to obey you. Most Christians don't even know that. Most of them don't, don't realize that all spirits have to obey them. That's why they talk so negative all the time. They don't know. Never understood it. And then that 10th verse says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. So say it. I'll say it right now when we say, No plague, no, plague. no, virus, no virus will come near me. Ha, 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 in Jesus' name. Ha, Just believe it. What would you just do when you've done that? Pleased God. There's a lot of people, there's people watching on this YouTube, they're going to be amazed at how, they're going to think, you mean is that easy to please God? Yeah. Never heard that probably before a lot of them. Never heard this. It's that easy. Look at Psalms 103. Verse 20. It says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. You want to please God? He sent the angels to minister to you, to help you. You want to believe him? You want to please him? By your faith, say, Angels, watch over me, guide me, protect me. Just say it by faith. You know what you're doing? You're pleasing God because you're doing what the Word says. You know, you can, I, I'm going to do another teaching on angels here here next few weeks probably. I've been, kind of been thinking about that. And I'm going to show you more about that, how to use the angels. I mean, they, God sent them here for us. But if you talk against them, they, they, you provoke them. <laughs> you can't talk against angels and what God has sent to help you. If you do, you provoke them. Mm. That's why we need to be careful about what we say. You'd be surprised how many times we provoke our angels and they won't do nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, say it and please God. Look at uh, Mark the ninth chapter. Mark nine. Mark. Book of Mark, ninth chapter. Verse 25 through 27. You know, I've had people in prayer lines tell me, I don't know how many times. Well, pray for them. The devil's been bothering me all week. And they have authority over the devil and the devil's been bothering them. <laughs> Why would you tell a preacher that? Because you don't know what the word says. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. you tell on yourself. If you knew what the word said, you would never be asking for prayer for such a thing. <laughs> verse 25 says, verse 20, would I say 25? I meant, yeah. 25 to 27. Uh, let's go to, yeah, 25 through 27. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more unto him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was one as one dead, insomuch that he said, they said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. You want to please God when spirits come around? What do you need to do? Get out of here. You've got the authority and the ability. Please God, speak to them. Don't let them just keep messing with you. Get out of here. It's that simple. Sickness, when sickness tries to come against you, say, I I refuse this spirit of infirmity. If you think it's a spirit. A lot of times it is a spirit bringing it against you. There ain't no need of praying for it if it's, if it's, if it's a, a spirit. Jesus never prayed for a spirit. He told it to get out. 
That's where we need discernment a lot of times when, some, when people's got a, something physically wrong with them. Sometimes it's the spirit causing it. And if you don't deal with the spirit, they ain't going to get healed. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, something we ain't really learned in church like we should. You want to please God? Speak to him. If you even think it's a spirit fooling with you about anything, then speak to it, tell it to get. That's all you got to do. You ever see a, a, a dog come around somebody and they'll say, get away from here, get. Yeah. And the dog will run off usually. Spirit's the same way. There ain't no difference. I'll guarantee you, if you say, get out of here, that spirit takes off. You got Jesus in you, he ain't staying around. When you do what? Speak to it. You got to speak to it. And what is that doing when you speak to it and it leaves? What do you think that done with God? That pleased him. So between Christians doing that and Christians putting up with the devil messing with them, how many of you think's pleasing him and how many ain't? <laughs> That's a good thought. Yeah. Most of the church ain't pleasing God because they'll let the devil just keep on and keep on messing with them. It's true. You know, and, and a lot of people, a lot of this stuff, you learn it when you start traveling around and going and seeing. Yeah, I, I, that's when I really started learning a lot of the things I learned because I'd watch. And uh, if I'd have just stayed in one church and never went nowhere and never done nothing, probably a lot of this I would have never got a hold of. But a lot of it, I saw it when I started moving around, different people, different churches and all that. <clears throat> and, and you, you know, through the years you start learning, you can, uh, you can watch whatever's the biggest thing is going on with the, with the Christians in a town. That's what the, that town is usually the best at. If, they, uh, if the church is in it, most of the church is in it, don't believe in healing, you can watch. It'll be a sick town. Most of the people in the bad problems. Oh, your believing has got all in the world to do with it, but then you've got to release your faith and please God. Hallelujah. Look at Mark 11, 23. We right there by it. You know, uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin, this was a scripture he used and preached a lot. And I may, you know, I've thought about, I ain't no telling how many times he pleased God with this scripture <laughs> using it. <laughs> and it says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say mm -hmm. unto this mountain. And that word mountain there means the problem is coming against you. If it's sickness, if it's a disease, if it's finances, whatever it is, that's a problem coming against you. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you say unto this problem, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Amen. Now, that, he ain't talking about you can start trying to believe in your heart that you'll have a pink Cadillac sitting in your garage tomorrow morning when you get there. That's foolishness. <laughs> but that's what a lot of people took, Christians has took this scripture and tried to use it for stuff like that. And then they say, well, it don't work. Well, this scripture does work. And it will work for you in your life if you're a Christian. You got to get it in your heart. You can't get it in your heart that you'll have a pink Cadillac sitting in the garage to start with. Or a hundred oil wells. I'll have a hundred oil wells tomorrow. I heard somebody say that one time. I'm going to take this and say if you say it, you'll have it. I'm going I'm to believe I got a hundred oil wells tomorrow. <laughs> it ain't going to happen because you can't get that in your heart. That's foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a problem coming against you, if you get it down in your spirit and you start doing what this scripture says and you speak with determination, believing it, it'll work. 
It may, it may not work by the next day or the next week, but if you stay with it, it's going to work. It's going, the scripture will carry you through it. Hallelujah. And when you do that, what do you think you're doing when you do that by faith? Pleasing God. Hallelujah. He didn't put this scripture in there just to be in there. Is the reason for it. And he's, he's fixed it where if his children will take this word and use it, they will please him. You know, the more you know you please in God, the easier life gets. I don't know how that works like that, but it does. The more you, it's just things don't come against you. Things don't bother you. Don't seem like, like they would before. When I started, when I started realizing I was releasing my faith and I was pleasing God like the old people did in the Old Testament back there, it just seemed like everything started working better. Because if you're thinking, well, I don't know whether God liked that. Or I don't know whether I should have done that. And you get in condemnation, you get in uh, fear, you get into feeling unworthy. There is no way you're going to please God. It's impossible. Faith, speaking it by faith and put some action in it, pleases God. When you say what the word says, your words are faith and energy that affects your life and it'll affect, it'll affect matter that is in your life. In other words, Romans 10.10 10 says, if you believe in your heart and speak with your mouth, you shall be saved. What did that do? That just brought life to you. You did it by faith. Disease and sickness would be matter in your life. Uh, not having enough finances. That's matter. That's thing. What do you do? What do you do to them? Say, get out in Jesus' name. If it's healing by his stripes, I am healed. Not I hope you heal me. That ain't gonna please God hoping it. Not maybe. Now say it and believe it with determination. Please God. Amen. James 2.17, we read that a while ago where it said, faith without works is dead. I think there's a lot of people trying to use faith with no works in it now. And that's why, and it's causing faith, to, it's causing people to say, well, that, that faith don't always work. Well, it does if you do it according to the Bible. It'll always work. 1 John 4, 4. And it says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Every time, if you, when you say that, when you say that, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You reckon that's pleasing God saying what the word says? Amen. And you believe that? You know, you can use that scripture right there for a lot of things in your life. When uh, somebody's trying to do you wrong or you know they're doing you wrong or whatever, mm -hmm. they greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Yeah. I just had to do that about somebody's got a house. I don't know how many times here lately. <laughs> I think about him, I say, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Lord, I just pray for them to have wisdom and knowledge. Good job making a lot of money. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> didn't, always, didn't always mean it down in here, but I say it. And you know what? After I said it and said it, it's, I started getting it in my heart. Amen. Yep. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. What? That, there's nothing in this world more important than that. It speaks volumes. Yeah. The greater one is a living in me, is alive in me. Greater is he that's in me. God's in me. God's love's in me. God's nature, God's ability, God's power. It flows out of my belly like rivers of living water. When I lay my hands on the sick, I'll make them well because God's in me. Amen. Hallelujah. The greater one's in me. See, you start saying and talking like that, what do you do? You're going to be pleasing God and what you're doing, you're focusing on your spirit. You're getting more sensitive to the spirit side and it'll work for you. 
Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Jesus. God's in me. Yes. God's alive yes. in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's spirit yes. flowing through me. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Bringing health and healing to every part of your body. Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The greater one. You know what that's doing? Pleasing God. You know, and so many times people are scared to do that. They think, oh, what's people going to think? Or what if it don't work? And they got all kind of excuses. Well, that ain't pleasing to God. I'd rather please God. I ain't going to think about all the consequences. I'm going to please God. Hallelujah. Then 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Now, boy, this is a scripture that uh, <laughs> a lot of people over the years has had a hard time with this scripture. First Corinthians six seventeen. And when I first started getting a hold of this scripture, I, I, I don't know how many times I'd look at it and read it. And, and, uh, and as you do, and you start getting some revelation off of it, you'll start saying things by faith. You can't help it. You just will. Amen. And what it does, it says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And I used to think about that. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And one spirit, how could you be one spirit? You know, and I'd think about that and I'd read this scripture and I'd think about it and I'd read this scripture. And what it is, you're not wanting to say what's really inside you to say because you sound like you shouldn't be saying that because that's what this flesh is saying, see? So I finally decided one day I read and I said, okay, if I'm one spirit with Jesus, that means my spirit and Jesus' spirit's hooked up together. And you can't tell where one starts and the other one ends. Glory to God, I got so happy. I said, I am hooked up to Jesus. My spirit is so hooked to Jesus, we can't even tell one from the other. Glory to God, boy, I got happy. <laughs> but, you know, in your flesh, don't even, you don't even want to say something like that in your flesh. When you first start saying, because that flesh is trying to say, eh, it can't be, don't do that, don't go there. <laughs> You're going to mess up. But that's exactly what happens when we get born again. Our spirit and God's spirit are hooked together. I mean, it's over with. We are hooked up with him spiritually. This spirit ain't going to change when we get to heaven. It's going to be the same spirit that's in us right now when we get to heaven. No difference. And it goes on and says, flee fortification. Ain't that amazing? Right after it said that, first thing it says, flee fortification. Mm -hmm. Wow. That ought to catch somebody's attention. Mm -hmm. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fortification sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God, and you are not your own. See, we don't even belong to us no more. We belong to God because we're hooked up to him spiritually. Yeah. Hallelujah. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So what is, what is, what is your body? Is it God's too? Yeah. Your spirit and your body once you get born again. And you're hooked up to him spiritually where well, you can't even tell where one starts and the other ends. We're so much like him spiritually. But what do we do most of the time? Living in the flesh. You, your mind's standing. It's like your mind is standing right here with two worlds. A natural world and a spiritual world. And your mind's right here making a decision which way to go all the time. If you make the godly decision, and the only way you do that is get your mind renewed, you'll go the spiritual route. If you don't get your mind renewed, you just get it renewed to the natural, you'll always go the natural route. 
Remember that little saying I said that uh, if you make a, a natural response to a natural problem, you get natural results. But if you make a spiritual response to a natural problem, you get supernatural spiritual results. Amen. And that only way that comes is through renewing your mind. Hallelujah. Don't renew your mind. There ain't going to be nothing there. Nothing but natural stuff. There ain't going to be no spiritual stuff there. And most of the church, they go to church on Sunday, but they don't never renew their mind. That's the biggest problem we got in church with the people. Two things causing us so much problems with the church. Natural teaching and people not renewing their mind. Them two things change, the whole world will change. So the more you see yourself a spirit, the better it's, your life's going to be down here on this earth. The more spiritual decisions you make rather than natural spirits decisions, the easier it's going to be down here on this earth. And the better it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Look at Ephesians 3.20. <laughs> This is another one of them scriptures I used to read and think, oh man, I don't quite understand that one. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could, we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Mm -hmm. Above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. I, I said, well, how much power have I got in me? <laughs> Must be degrees according to the way that scripture. I was, how much power have I got in me? I wanted to know. You know what the answer was? How much word knowledge you got in you? <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, I think I got that one. <laughs> no word? You ain't got much power. That's why the church ain't using no power. It's that simple. When you put the word in you, you get, I'm telling you, you get powerful. When you start getting this word in you, you start speaking to the spiritual things. You just will. Because you're getting some knowledge of it. What 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 God say over in Hosea, I believe it was four six? My people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. That's spiritual knowledge. They don't have the spiritual knowledge they need. And no spiritual knowledge, what are we doing? Perishing. Hallelujah. You know, me and John Jew talked this morning and uh, we decided, she said, when she gets off of work, eight o'clock every night, we're going to start reading at least one chapter in the Bible and talk about it. Because her English, she doesn't always, she doesn't understand everything English is talking about. So what we're going to have to do, we'll have to talk about it and try to see. And she's got her Chinese side, she can read that, but the Chinese version of the Bible, it ain't, it ain't as good as they don't have the words that we have. So when they translate it, it's a, it's a little bit different. So what we're going to do is start sitting down every night. She said, 8 o'clock, we sit down and do one chapter in the Bible every night. So what we're going to do, we ain't been doing that. And so we've just been kind of talking. But see, and I realize that and I know that. That's not getting the word in her like she needs it. And I need to do it. I need some more anyway. And talking to her about it, I'll get more revelation off of stuff right. more than likely doing that. And I, so I've been kind of asking the Lord. I said, well, Lord, where do you want me to start with her? And uh, we did it today. And uh, I went to the first Little John, done the first chapter in the book of Little John. I think I'm going to do that book, first book. The little, that Little John book, it's got, it's almost like a synopsis of all the New Testament. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing what all is in that, them five little chapters. Mm -hmm. So how much power you got working in you? 
<laughs> you know how much power is in you if, if, if you've been studying the word. If you ain't been studying it, what does that tell you? You ain't got much power. <laughs> I know, I know y'all hate to hear that, but it's the truth. You know, if you spend years and years going to college learning natural things and you won't spend a few hours in the Word, that's, a, that's pretty pitiful to me. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you like it is. Truth will set you free. And you ain't going to get set free if you don't know what the Word says. Hallelujah. Please God. Another one. Again, this is a scripture to be and really please God. Look at Acts third chapter. When you start studying this word and you start speaking this word, what are you doing? You are pleasing God. Who would you rather please? Uh, your college and learning your <laughs> education in college or please, and, and, and pleasing your professors or would you rather please God? <laughs> Not a hard choice, really, when you stop and think about it. Educated past your intelligence. Let's three third chapter. I'm gonna read one through nine. It says, "Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple." who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple ask alms, and Peter fasting his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So he was paying attention because he was paying attention and listening to them. Mm -hmm. He was moving in faith by doing that. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And when and Peter said, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Peter could not have lifted him up if he hadn't have tried to move too. Yeah, right he to tried to stand up while Peter was lifting him. That was his action by faith. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. <laughs> and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Do you reckon that pleased God? Amen. What if we do that today? You think that pleases God? How many Christians, if somebody's sitting there, can't walk, and all everything wrong with them like this man, how many Christians will walk by and how many will stop and, and try to do something? You want to please God? Stop and try to help the man. Now you can't always help somebody if they don't want help. But you don't know until you you, you got to talk to them to find out. As an example of her, I talked to y'all. We talked. And I seen she was wanting some help. And I started to help him. Now what if what if I hadn't helped and nobody everybody come along, nobody else would have helped? Where would she be right now? Same place. And I'm not trying to say that about me, I'm just telling you, that's what the word of God will do. The only reason I do that is because I got the word in me. You listen to your spirit. You don't you ain't gonna listen to your spirit if you ain't got some word in you to start with. In the natural, in your natural eye, in your natural believing, Dottie would have been something where there's no need of fooling with her. You know, she's already, she's messed up. She can't walk. She's older. I mean, the, the people has got all kind of excuses they'll use. Don't use excuse. Please God. Do something to help them. Do what you know to do. Do what's in your spirit. And it'll make a difference in people's lives. Naturally, you ain't making a whole lot of good in people's lives in the natural compared to the spiritual. I mean, you can help people in the natural, but it is nothing compared to the spiritual. Start speaking this word by faith and please God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to...
Brother John, hallelujah, I'm through. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 